So in addition to the applications that Scene Assembly has for managing of large scenes or large scale environments, you can also manage character representations with it as well. And we'll talk about some of the changes that we've made in 2014. But as a general example, I'm going to load up a character assembly definition, which points to multiple representations of this particular character. So what you see here is the stand-in character, which actually has a fully functional editable rig, but you'll notice that the geometry um, is essentially stand-in geometry, it's not the final character. If I grab the associated character definition for this, you can see that I can also load in a variety of other representations. So for instance, I can switch from the unanimated stand-in rig to the animated or animatable full rig, which has the actual final character in it. Now this is actually animated, so if I scrub the timeline here, you can see I have the full animation on this rig. Now, this allows me, of course, to make modifications to the rig, apply animation, but in some cases, if I were to bring this into an environment, I may actually want to see a simpler representation of this rig. So one thing that I can do is I can take the geometry for this character, and I can export this out as a GPU cache. So if I export out the geometry as a GPU cache, I have the ability, of course, to include animation. So I just simply set my time range, export it out as an Olympic cache, and then I can point the representation to that cache. So here you'll see a cache representation. It's the same animation, but you'll notice it's just the cache with no rig. This would allow me to bring this into an environment or a set and have a fast draw, fast play a version of this character. Now another option is we can actually convert geometry into animated bounding boxes and this is a new functionality in my 2014. So if we go to the convert menu and we go to geometry to bounding box we've added a few new options in here. One of those is the ability to include animation. By including animation I can of course set my timeline uh, or, or my bounds for, for my animation as well as the number of samples. And what that will ultimately do is it will convert the animation into animated bounding boxes and if you take a look at what I've got here, if I switch over into the bounding box representation, you'll see I get a visual representation of the character, but these are actually just simple animated transforms. So if I take a look at any one of these bounding boxes, and I take a look in the channel box, you'll notice that it's actually the translate, rotate, and scale of these bounding boxes that is getting animated. So there are no, there's no vertex animation, it's not even referencing a cache file, it's just a simple transform animation which should allow you to get a very fast draw, uh, fast representation of your character. So there are a variety of options for creating these simplified variations of your character and then you can tie those in to the assembly definition node and then just switch back and forth really easily and you'll notice how quickly you're able to switch back and forth. So let's talk about some other ways that we can use scene assembly or as you'll hear them called character assemblies for characters and animation. So I'm actually going to load up a master scene file that will just be kind of the uh, hosting file for all of my assembly references that I'm going to work with. Now in here, I'll go to the outliner, and I'm going to reference, or rather uh, reference a scene assembly, to a gun assembly that I've pre-created. Now this gun assembly has a simple stand-in for the positioning and orientation of the gun. If I go into the attribute editor, I can, of course, just like I did with the character, switch into variations, or switch into representations, rather, of the gun. So I have these different versions of a gun that I could use depending on the needs of my character. So I'm going to load up a fully animatable, kind of complex version of this Mega Blaster that's going to work with my character. Now before I do anything to this, I want to talk a little bit about how assembly definitions work uh, with selection. What you'll notice right now is if I just click and select, I'm able to actually access the underlying lower level components of my rig. Now you can also use asset-centric selection which will redirect your selection to the higher level assembly reference node. So now when I click anywhere on this gun it's always going to redirect my selection to the assembly reference node. Now the assembly reference node has a transform associated with it which I could use but I actually want to work on the lower level components of my, of my asset. So let's go to the channel box and just to prevent myself from accidentally moving the, major, the master transform here, I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to lock all the channels of the master transform. And then I'm going to use, uh, or rather disable my asset-centric selection so that I can grab the various components of my uh, gun rig. 
So I actually want to grab the control object, which is this little locator here, of my gun rig, and I'll position that and then kind of orient it and rotate it into place. Now what you'll notice is that I can basically switch between these different, different representations, and as I do, that transform will be inherited. So if I switch to, for instance, the regular blaster, you'll notice it's going to be in the exact same spot as the rig that I was working with before. So let's go back to the animated rig and let's make some animation changes. So right now this is an unanimated rig. So just like with standard references, you can apply animation to things like rigs as a reference edit. So what I'm going to do is basically go in here, select the handle for my gun, which is as uh, a driver for these you know, front end components of the gun on the blaster. And I'm going to set a keyframe and I'll just kind of cycle through this and I'll just set some keyframes just to show that this is actually animating. I'll just create an in and an out here and then I'll do one more or there an open and close, whatever you want to call that. And now if I scrub the timeline you can see I've got some real basic animation there. Now all the animation that I've applied is in my master scene as a reference edit. If I were to simply switch over into a different version, let's go back to the regular blaster for instance, you'll see that there is no associated animation for this gun because I don't have the same control object. If I grab the assembly reference node in the outliner, I can actually access the edits and these edits are based on the same edit scheme that we use for standard referencing. So now you'll see that I have a list of all the animation references and anything highlighted in red will basically indicate that that animation is muted or, or disabled because it cannot find the associated animation channels or attributes in this particular representation. Now I can actually remove these edits if I want to or I can just temporarily preserve them and then when I'm ready I can bring back my animated rig and all that animation will get reattached to the uh, appropriate uh, channels or appropriate attributes on this rig. So let's switch back to the stand-in and then we'll bring in another character to associate this asset with. So I already have my weapon assembly loaded so let's go into the outliner and let's create a reference to the character assembly that we were showing before. So I'm going to point to the character, character definition uh, assembly definition and you'll see that it brings in of course my stand-in. So I have the stand-in for the gun and I have the stand-in for the rig. So what I want to do is actually go in and grab this gun, and I'll just use this little locator here to grab it. That will uh, basically grab a component within the assembly definition node, which is the transform of my gun. And now I'm going to just kind of loosely place this over the hand. So I'll just use my point snapping just to kind of get this in the appropriate spot. And then I'll just kind of rotate that into place, and I'll do something. Whoops, let's get the right channel there. Let's get the x-axis. I'll just kind of rotate that into place, and I'll begin to position it relative to the hand. Now, I'm not going to be uh, too anal about this, but we'll just kind of get it uh, loosely positioned there. And now what I want to do is associate this with the rig. You can see if I start to move this rig, there's no connection. So what we've done in 2014 is we've added the ability to create constraints as well as parent-child relationships between objects within different assemblies. So what I'm going to do is actually create a parent constraint from the hand control of one assembly to the transform of the other assembly. So I'm just going to simply go in here to my constraint options. I'll create a parent constraint. And now whenever I move this hand, you'll notice that the gun goes along for the ride. And again, this is two different character assemblies. So let's just kind of loosely position this down by his side. Now another example would be is, is if I had a separate object in the master scene. So let's go into the channel box and you'll notice that I have a target. This target is actually animated but it's not actually driving anything. So what I'm going to do is actually use this target as an aim constraint for the head. And again this is all on my dummy character. So now when I come into the constraints I want to create an aim constraint. The one thing that I want to change here is I want to change the aim vector from X to Z so the appropriate channel will actually do the aiming. Now I'll apply that and you can see here wherever this look at goes the head will follow and of course like I said there is animation on this so that's going to drive the, uh, the look at or the aim of the head. So again, I've done all of this kind of these assembly relationships on the stand-in rigs for both the gun and the character. So what I can do is at any point I can switch to the animation versions of these rigs. So I'm going to go up to the scene assembly uh, or uh, assembly definition node and I'll switch this character into my anim rig. And you'll see that as soon as I do that, 
all of the connections to the constraint get redirected to this new rig. So now you can see that he's indeed carrying the gun, that constraint is still intact, and the locator, or rather the look at uh, object that was driving the head gets redirected to the new animated character. Now I can also do the same thing with the gun. So if I just grab the gun and I'll just up arrow to grab the, the highest level assembly node. And now I can switch this as well into the anim rig. And now you'll notice that the gun gets reattached essentially in the same exact way. As long as I'm using the right naming conventions and as long as I have the appropriate positioning of the controls that I want to attach to, you can see that everything gets redirected and reconnected appropriately. Now if I take a closer look, you'll notice that the gun itself, I can actually get in here a little closer, the gun itself is still animated because that was a layered edit animation on top of this master scene. Uh, but again, everything is, is cleanly reconnected and uh, reattached. So now I can actually load in other versions of these and those would get reattached to the appropriate channels of whatever representations or versions or variations of these rigs that I might want to bring in.